Hey there, and welcome to the Big Apple Scope Podcast. My name is Sam. And my name is Vladimir. And today we're asking, what's the crack about Kazakhstan? So we're going to learn about uh, any experiences we may have had in Kazakhstan, what life is like there, um, what we associate with Kazakhstan, what towns or cities we may have visited, uh, what were our favorites there, and maybe even about the food, what's the best thing about Kazakhstan, maybe problems in Kazakhstan, uh, the culture that it is a little bit different from Russia, but how and why, in what way, uh, difficulties in living there or going there. Although if you go with an Irish passport, you can you can go in visa free for a little time, uh, so that can be good for you uh, if you if you're Irish, of course. And the best places for tourists, what we would recommend. So something hopefully for everyone and learning about somewhere where maybe not so well known, Kazakhstan. So are you are you happy? Yes. Are you excited? I'm, I'm excited. Are you buzzing? Yes. Are you thrilled? Of Are you course. over the moon? <laughs> yes. So let, let's let's learn about let's Kazakhstan and let's learn about you. Where were you born? I was born in Kazakhstan. <laughs> and of course. How did we pick this topic? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Really. We're so clever. It's just, yeah. It's almost like we chose it. Okay. So I was born in Kazakhstan in the mm -hmm. city called Ust Kamenogorsk, or in Kazakh they call it Oskemen. Mm -hmm. And well, how does well, that translate? If if for those who don't speak Russian or. Well, it can be translated like, uh, well, you know, in Uskamnagorsk there is, there are two rivers, uh, uh -huh. the Irtish and the Ulba River. Right. And the Ulba River uh, flows into the Irtish, and so right. that's the place where uh, those two rivers meet. Uh -huh. It's like, uh, can I say the mouth of the river? Yes. Right. Yes, you can. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can. And can Kalin, uh, isn't that stone? Yes, it's like stone. Yes, right. Because. Uh, the nature is kind of mountainous, mm -hmm. and uh, well, you mm. see the river, you see those mountains, Great. and so that's the name. What's the name of the city means? Mm. Logical. Mm. Yeah, I like logic. Mm. Okay, and tell us more about you, please. So you're from Kazakhstan, but let us know who are you. Well, <laughs> I'm a person. Oh, <laughs> oh well. Are you Kazakh? Uh, no, I'm not Kazakh. I'm an ethnic Russian. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I was born and I was raised there. Yeah. Well, actually, I can say that up to this mo moment, I've spe I spent uh, like the most of my life there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, of course, I had some uh, good memories. Maybe some of them are good, mm -hmm. some of them are not so good, but still, mm -hmm. well, it's life. And you were born in the Soviet Union, right? Yes, I was born in the 80s. In uh -huh. 18, uh, <laughs> in 1980s? <laughs> <laughs> in, <laughs> 1880s, wow, you've heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> I was okay, born so in the 80s too. Mm -hmm. You were born in the 80s? Yes, I was born in 1984, yeah. Ah, so okay. In the Soviet Union. Right. And I was born in 1983. But not in the Soviet Union. I, I somehow didn't. Surprisingly. How could it be that I was born in 1983, but not in the Soviet Union? Okay. So, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. Okay. So, what three things uh, would you use to describe Kazakh life? What three words? Okay. Well, I would say, first of all, uh, hospitality, because Kazakh people are very hospitable. Mm -hmm. They like uh, having guests, they like to put you in hospital. Uh, <laughs> Guest friendly. Yeah. yeah Guest yeah, friendly. Yeah, right. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Hospitable. And then uh, maybe two things that they're like, uh, it's kind of a mix of love of traditions because, mm -hmm. well, Kazakh people try to keep their traditions alive. Okay. And uh, strive for modern life, mm -hmm. uh, for modern technologies because, right. for example, if you visit uh, well, some cities in Kazakhstan, like the capital Astana, which is not Astana now. Yeah, you know, Nur Sultan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Almaty. Well, mm -hmm. uh, usually mm -hmm. when uh, foreigners, I mean, when tourists uh, uh, come to see those cities, they they feel surprised because mm -hmm. what what they can see there. Well, it just it's very great, and well, they see modern houses, mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure. And uh, well, they say that it looks more like Europe, right. not Asia. Right. And when I think of Kazakhstan, I haven't traveled much in Kazakhstan, but I think of people riding on horses, 
with brown <laughs> Asian Asian features, and and they're riding on horses, and they've you know lovely clothes and very traditional clothes, and there's an eagle in the sky, and you know, they're going through these fields with blue sky and mm-hmm. lots yeah. of lots of wheat in the fields, and the wind is coming down, and it's just a you know a, sort of mm-hmm. a beautiful yeah, scene. Yeah. <laughs> But I guess that's a bit. That's very stereotypical, right? Yes, yes. It's, it's not. It's not quite everyday life. That's that's what we call stereotypes. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it's a former Soviet Union country, so it, it can yes, be. Yes, yes. Well, it, it feels quite like uh, quite like well, Russia uh, in that yeah, respect. Because uh, if you go there, uh, well, I don't think that you will see a lot of differences between um, mm-hmm. life in Russia and life in Kazakhstan. Mm-hmm. Well, it's quite similar. Yeah, yeah. And how did you uh, or your family end up in Kazakhstan? Well, my family moved to Kazakhstan, uh, well, as far as I know, uh, during the First World War, mm-hmm. like uh, in the in uh, in 1914, because, mm-hmm. well, uh, my grand... Not my grandfather, but my great grandfather, wow. he yeah. lived in Ukraine, uh-huh. and well, some of uh, some of my, as I can say, ancestors they live uh-huh. uh, in uh, some uh, in in Russia. I mean, in those Russian regions mm-hmm. that border with Ukraine. I mean, yeah. modern Ukraine. Right. right. And uh, well, they were forced to move to the east, uh-huh. and so they ended up in Kazakhstan. Right. Uh, well. Yeah, so and then the rest is history, as we mm-hmm. say, right? And I uh, have been in Kazakhstan. Oh. Uh, I'm I'm not neither Russian nor Kazakh, but my uh, my wife uh, is uh, Russian, like yourself, who uh, was born in Kazakhstan, and she was born just at the very end. <laughs> and sometimes we blame her for okay. the end of the Soviet Union uh-huh. because <laughs> she was born shortly before the end of that uh, time period, that history. Um, yeah. So, uh, so I went uh, because I have family now through my wife mm-hmm. in Kazakhstan. I went to a town called uh, Oh, let me see, Semipalatinsk. Semipalatinsk. Uh, yes, but uh, well, nowadays it's called Simi. Simi, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. which is called Simi, which means kind of like family, kind of, kind of, doesn't it? Genitive mm, form. No, not, no, not no. Connected with well, that. Semipalatinsk originates from uh, the word like seven. Uh, Chambers or maybe seven tents. Uh-huh. When we say it right. in, in modern right. Russian, well, because there was an expedition. Now they have no tents, just seven. <laughs> <laughs> because well, it's the Kazakh name that was shortened. Uh-huh. Because in Kazakh language, I don't think they that they 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 like long words like Russian. Right. Right. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, and it's easier uh, for me too, <laughs> and it's quite close to where you uh, were born and grew up. It's yes, not, it's just not so uh, far away. Uh huh. Right yeah, uh, in the northeast, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one region. I mean, it's uh, uh, the uh, east, east Kazakhstan. Yeah. Uh, and well, if we talk about the origin of that name, as far as I know, there was an expedition uh-huh. that was. Um, well, there was an order of uh, Peter the Great uh-huh. who wanted to explore. Uh, right. These la- those lands, I mean, uh-huh. that right. are in the in the east of modern of present day Kazakhstan, uh-huh. and uh, they wanted to protect those lands because of the mm, some uh, enemies. I mean, some mm-hmm. tribes from uh, China. They mm-hmm. they're called Jungars or something like that. Right. Okay. And so uh, that's why that expedition. Found its cities like Pavlodar, mm. then uh, Semipalatinsk and Uskaminagorsk. Mm. Okay, good. To, I'm I'm learning all the time. <laughs> Every day is a school day, as as I used to be told. And Uskaminagorsk used to be well. First of all, it it used to be a fortress uh-huh, to right. protect those lands. Yes. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. And what things do you associate with Kazakhstan? So when you hear the word Kazakhstan, what do you think of? Well, uh, just maybe I would think of uh, some traditional things that you uh-huh. talked about, like right. uh, like uh, <laughs> camels and those traditional uh-huh. clothes, uh-huh. Uh, eagle eagles in the sky. But also, uh, I think that um, Kazakh nature uh, can be like uh, uh, one of the place to visit for yeah. tourists because uh, actually. 
Well, I can say that the, the nature is quite various, but mm. the eastern and southern parts of the country, I mean, the east and maybe southeast, yeah. uh, is, well, these, those parts are very beautiful and picturesque because, right. uh, because they are covered with mountains. And, yeah. Well, I think that uh, mountains, like, it's the best place in the yeah. world because it's, well, it's yeah. always very beautiful. Yeah. Do you love mountains? And, and uh, well, you... I, I can say I love them, but anyway, it's yeah. uh, it's great to see you them. Appreciate it's, the, uh, yeah, the appreciate the wonder of them all. Yeah, yeah. And I guess uh, <laughs> I I was surprised, and uh, when I went to Simi, I uh, was there sort of late spring, I guess. Or early spring? It was May time. That would be late spring, wouldn't it? Late spring. I think, late spring, yeah. and <laughs> I probably should know that. <laughs> but but with the chain difference in weather in this region, it's sort of confusing to me. Um, but I was there uh, with my wife, and I was like, "Wow, look! Wow, there's an eagle!" Mm -hmm. And she was like, "Oh yeah, an, an eagle. Okay." And uh, that's and she was like, "That's normal. Yeah, and that's nothing strange." But for Quite me, that usual. was wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, an eagle in the sky. And I saw several eagles. I mean, uh, just you could look up at, at any mm -hmm. time of the day, on any day, and you could potentially see an eagle above you. And that for me is quite unusual because, uh, yes, there are eagles in Northern Ireland, but I think we don't see them as often and as regularly as you might. In yes, Kazakhstan. because uh, anyway, those, the areas that are uh, like steps. Uh -huh. Yes, can we say like this? Yeah, I guess like prairie so. steps. Yeah, I, I, I think flat, so. Flat, flat land and <laughs> right, covered yeah. with grass, no trees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, well, it's just a common place for for eagles, for right. such birds. Yeah, they're they're out there looking for whatever mm -hmm. rats or whatever yeah. they can eat there. So that right. that was unusual for me. Uh, so I would associate. The eagle with Kazakhstan, which I guess it's on the flag, isn't it? It's it's on the flag. Yes, so, it, so uh, it's guess... considered to be like a national symbol, right? Mm -hmm. And but I since that I have seen them in Novosibirsk here, and uh, so it's not it's not necessary. It's not unique, but it is maybe specific to this region because we're not yeah, super yeah. far. Right. I guess they don't need a passport, right? Or a visa. <laughs> for, <laughs> so for them, they're lucky. Yes. For, <laughs> they just fly. And they don't need to they stand. They don't have to be preoccupied no security with the bureaucracy, yes, <laughs> paper stuff. <laughs> they don't have to get their, um, go through a scanner or anything. Mm -hmm, right. Uh, so which towns or cities have you been to? So for me, I've only been in Simi, uh, well, because I've that's been... where my family were uh -huh, uh, or right. are. Where have you been in Kazakhstan? Well, I've been to many cities, and mm -hmm. well, first of all, of course, Almaty and Astana or Nur Sultan, uh -huh. and uh, I've been to Karaganda, uh, Kustanay, and uh, Petropavlovsk, uh, Kokshetau. So many, many cities yeah. in the north, in the northern part, in the central part of Kazakhstan. Well, Almaty is in the south. Yeah. And are they all very different from each other? No, I wouldn't say they're different because they look like, well, they look very similar to each other. Well, of course, uh, the capital of Kazakhstan and Almaty, uh, well, they they are different yeah. because, well, Almaty is the largest city in Kazakhstan. The population is about two million people. Right. And, uh, well, the city is growing so fast it attracts a lot of people from uh, the nearby areas. Uh -huh. So it's like maybe it's like maybe Moscow in Russia. Uh -huh, right. <laughs> so many just people much smaller. Though, yes, but. a lot of people want to live yeah. there and want to move there. Right, well, right. And a lot of the the development is happening in Almaty. Yes, of course. Right. And uh, it used to be the capital of Kazakhstan. That's why maybe the city, well. The rate of development is quite fast, right? I think, and, that's and well, it's also it's the most beautiful city for me, and I think for many people in Kazakhstan, right. because when you come there, uh, you can see like, especially in the summer, uh, there are lots of green uh, green spaces, uh -huh. and you can see those high mountains covered with ice and glaciers. Right. Yeah, it's, it's quite. It's it's in the south, is it, Almaty? South, 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 east, south, east, south east, right? Yeah. So it's that those mm -hmm. mountains and the yeah, it's different uh, landscape. They're, they're called the Alatau Mountains. Uh -huh. 
mm -hmm. right? Yes, and well, they look very beautiful and they yeah. attract lots of tourists, not only from Kazakhstan, but also from other countries too. Are they quite high? Yes, because mm -hmm. because even in summer, and I should say that the climate is on, in Almaty is, well, it's uh, pretty warm, especially uh -huh. in summer, the temperatures can be like 30, 35, or even 40 degrees Celsius. Ouch, ouch. Yes, and well, <laughs> but <clears throat> when, you, when you go to the mountains, yeah. you can see those, uh, you can see the snow and the ice, and yeah. well, it's... It's so fresh when you when you yeah. go there. If you go, if you go up on a really hot summer day, mm -hmm. I think it'd yes. be a nice contrast. Yes, yes. You got the, 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 you're so nice. hot. I mean, I would be like melting at that to temperature, and then if I go up to the snow, ooh, yeah, that would be nice. Yes, and uh, well, one more thing that I that I like about the mountains, the Alatau Mountains, is that they're all covered uh, in forests, so mm. they're not just. Uh, Right, it's uh, not just, a, just grass or something like not that. Not just oh, here's some rock, yeah, big yeah. rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so how come? That's why they're very beautiful. Almaty used to be the capital, am I right? Yes, yes, until 1998 or seven. Right, and so Astan, I mean Nur Sultan now, <laughs> it's just recently been changed. But I mean, yeah. why is it the capital and not Almaty? Well, is because uh, I know that. Uh, uh, the former president of Kazakhstan, I mean uh, Nazarbayev, right. he well in the in the nineties he wanted to change the capital city because, well, uh, the location of uh, Astana, well, right. it used to be called Akmola, then Selinagrad, then Akmola again, then Astana. Right. Now right. it's Nur Sultan, so it's it's located in the geographical center of the country, uh -huh. and uh, well. Maybe it's kind of easier to govern the country when the Logistics. capital is in the center. Yes, right. and uh, well, as far as I know, one one more reason was that it's uh, it clo it's closer to the Russian border because well, we know that uh, Nazarbayev was and is very friendly to to Russia, and so uh -huh. right. so he wanted to maybe to strengthen and to establish more ties with, with the right. Russian Federation. It made, it made sense. It was a practical idea, really, to do that. Okay, and I get the suspicion, I was going to ask which is your favorite place that you visited, but I get the suspicion it's Almaty. Yes, yes, that's yeah. for sure. I mean, is it, a, is it by far better than Astana? Is, what's the, what are the differences? Um, well, Almaty looks very modern, yeah. because, uh, well, if you go there, you can see, like I would say, even maybe uh, uh, skyscrapers. I mean, some tall buildings, mm -hmm. and they look very modern. And uh, because, mm -hmm. because you know, uh, the people who design those buildings, well, mostly they uh, they are from uh, Turkey or from uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, well, maybe right. I'm mistaken, but yeah. well, maybe some people who know I won't ever correct better you. <laughs> than me, they will correct me, yeah. yes. Yeah. But it looks very modern and, well, it yeah. looks like a European city. Uh -huh. And, uh, and well, it's very, like, uh, I mean, administrative. You, yeah. Because all the governmental buildings, of course, are there. And right. in Almaty, the atmosphere is completely different. Uh -huh. You can feel it when you when you visit those cities and just uh -huh. when you compare it so you can see the difference, I think. Yeah. Do you think it's more organized or you mean you mean Astana or Nur Sultan? Uh, uh um, Almaty. Uh, Almaty. Mm. Or uh, oh I, Nur Sultan is more organized because yes, you've got yes. the government. Mm -hmm, right. Right. So it's more controlled uh -huh. and yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, I would say that uh, Almaty is like maybe culture, the cultural, cultural uh, capital, capital of right. Kazakhstan. Yes, so it's a bit like the situation between Moscow and Saint Petersburg. Cause kind it, of, yes. It was the Similar. capital, mm -hmm. and then it's now yes. Moscow. Right. And, yeah. So it's maybe a little bit like that, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, what's the best thing about Kazakhstan? Ooh, well, or thing, the best, the or best things, thing, if you prefer. The best thing is the. I can say that the best thing is the ability of people to be friendly. I mean, because uh -huh. uh, maybe you know that Kazakhstan is a multi-ethnical country, right? And there are like one hundred or even 
maybe 120 uh, ethnicities, ethnical groups right. that live there, and they're they're all friendly. So yeah, and it's I think it's very great when people can can be friendly towards each other, in spite of differences in culture, in languages, yeah. in religion. Uh -huh. uh, well, and I think it's. Just it's a good thing that Kazakhstan and Kazakh people or Kazakhstani people, because uh -huh. we're not talking only about Kazakhs. Right. Uh, well, uh, so, so you would say that you're a Kazakhstani uh, Russian? Could you, could you say Kazakhstani <laughs> Russian? I could say I used to be, uh -huh, but right. in the, well, now right, I live here. Yes. Yeah, so you're living here now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's different. Yes, Ooh. and I think that, uh, well, I, I think it's very good when people can value this, yeah. this friendship. Right. Yeah, and, and get get along. Mm -hmm. Why can't it's, we it's very be friends? Yeah. You want to sing with me? Yeah. Why can't we be friends? And I don't remember the words. Um, and if you ask me, I mean, I, of course, I was only there for a short time. I didn't travel around. I wasn't, unfortunately, in any of the mm -hmm. big cities or anything. Although yeah. I would love, I would love to visit um, North Sultan or Almaty. Well, yes, now I want should, to go. Yeah, you should now go I want there. to go to Almaty because you you told me so much about Almaty. I'm like, oh, I yes. want to go there. But and you should go there in the summer because right. well, in winter it's, is it's it quite very, wet. Is it chilly? It's chilly. It's not cold, but not it's chilly. Not minus thirty or anything. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can be zero, maybe minus five. Yeah. But the most days, uh, it's even. I mean, the temperatures are above zero, yeah. but it's very wet because. Uh, the, that humidity comes from the mountains, and yeah. uh, well, I'm I'm from Northern Ireland. I don't mind. Oh it's yeah, wet. I, I forgot about like, it. Yes. Wet rain doesn't <laughs> think you will, doesn't annoy me so much. It, it will be okay yeah, for you. Chilly but anyway, the summer is the best season to visit yeah. Almaty. Right, right. Um, no, but but if you ask me what the best thing about Kazakhstan with my very Ooh, limited yes, experience, so what's, what's that? I would say uh, it's my mother-in-law's hospitality. Oh, because you you talked about Kazakh Kaz, people in Kazakhstan being very hospitable, and I definitely feel yeah. that she's a very hospitable That's person. Good. And I, uh, my wife and I stayed with her. Of course, it's it's my wife's home, but I felt very much at home uh, with them there. So it was great. And I and I used an old Soviet coffee grinder and Soviet mm -hmm. coffee machine. <laughs> yeah, uh, from I don't know eighties or maybe even earlier. And uh, you know that the coffee works. tasted great. <laughs> it it was fantastic. I mean, uh, of Good. course, you know, plug it in, and it's not mm -hmm. doesn't look like a modern coffee yeah. grinder or anything, but it worked fantastic, and I I enjoyed my coffee just as much as anywhere. It was great. Yeah. Um, what food food and culture from Kazakhstan do you enjoy, or did you enjoy maybe when you were there? Uh, yeah, well. <laughs> As, as for the food, I think that, well, you mentioned Bawasaki. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they're like uh, small, I no small idea. pieces, yes, small pieces of dough. Yeah, well, well, there that are there like, are bigger ones too. Yes, but um, usually I've tried both. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, uh, which which ones did you like well, most? Well, first of all, uh, <laughs> my wife and I were just okay. Let's go to a shop and get mm -hmm. a few things, and we we saw I saw. These Barosaki, and I thought, ooh, they look nice. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they, they don't necessarily look healthy because they, yeah, they, yeah, but they're, anyway, and they're, they're not. Tasty, but they're but they are so, ooh, they're, mm -hmm. and they looked fresh, and there were maybe six or, or maybe more in a packet. And I thought, ooh, let's try these. And I said to my wife, and she said, yeah, yeah, sure. And and um, and it turned out it's the bigger Barosaki. They're they're kind of like a mm -hmm. what I would call a. A donut or a gravy ring, something, uh, yes, something like that. There's yeah. no jam or anything mm -hmm. inside them, and but they're not sweet, but they are very, yeah. very savory, very mm -hmm. salty and buttery, um, and not, I guess, not healthy, but they're I, I, delicious. Yes, but yeah, they're Addictive. delicious, right? Especially if they're if they're homemade uh, and made by local people. I mean, yeah. by Kazakhs, right? Well, they just melt they, in your mouth, yeah, deliciousness. Right. So I would definitely recommend those, but but not too many because you'll uh, you'll put it on the pounds or the kilograms. And I tried the yeah. little ones too, mm -hmm. and they're kind of uh, they're very different. Uh, at least what I tried, they're quite 
crunchy little balls yeah, and small ones. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Right. And and still delicious and and I guess not so healthy, but but quite different from the bigger mm -hmm. bausake. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe the second uh, the second dish is bishbarmak, which means five fingers, because traditionally <laughs> uh, Kazakh people used to eat uh, this dish with their fingers. Ah, right. yes. it, it's not, there's no fingers in the dish. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. <laughs> uh, right. Well, it contains meat, uh, uh -huh. which is like finely chopped because, right. uh, and especially, well, uh, well, it has some meaning. I mean, mm. if you, if you chop meat, uh, uh, like if you cut it in tiny pieces, mm -hmm. it means that you show respect for people who will eat this dish right. so that they could chew it uh -huh. <laughs> better and something like that. Right. And well, it's, uh, it contains this boiled meat and uh, noodles mm -hmm. and it's like spiced with some kind of sauce, mm -hmm. but it's, well, it's very tasty too. Sounds good. I, mm -hmm. I don't think I've eaten it, but I've heard of it. Yes, it's, it's um, a traditional dish. Yeah. yeah. And well, I should say that uh, mostly all Kazakh uh, food contains, I mean, all Kazakh dishes contain, contains meat. Uh -huh. so it's horse there. meat, right? Well, basically <laughs> horse meat, yes. It can be, yeah, it's, yes. it's quite popular. Mm -hmm. But too. well, nowadays, well, horse meat or, uh, well, it can be also beef or lamb, but no pork, of course. R right, yes, it's a, uh, against uh, most people's yeah, religion. Because yeah, yeah, right. uh, it's quite strange, m or maybe a little bit strange, for someone in the UK, like we had a few years ago a kind of controversy mm -hmm. because one of the big supermarkets was selling burgers and it said on the packaging that it was beef, beef uh -huh. burgers, so uh -huh. cow, okay, great. But it was found out that it was actually horses, horse meat. Oh, and this was a big controversy, and some really? people were like, "Oh no, we're eating horse!" And and it's like, some people are like traumatized at the <laughs> fact that they're eating a horse. Did they sue uh, that company? <laughs> I, I don't know if anything ever happened. I mean, there was a a bit of bad publicity, mm -hmm, okay. and they had to change their packaging. But I don't know if any if they lost any money or anything, or anyone sued. I don't know if it's it was such a big deal mm -hmm. for for too many people, but it was a bit of a controversy, and because mm -hmm, yeah. people were like, "Oh, we can't be eating horses," you know, it, it's quite well, strange. They just from, didn't expect that, of course. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's false advertising, but maybe that people love horses more than cows. <laughs> it's just kind of well, maybe, maybe, maybe. It's maybe. kind of hypocritical, but okay. but I'm just thinking from a Kazakh point of view. That would be a really strange argument. It would be a really strange controversy to have yeah, because I think so. you've Maybe got so much I, horse yeah. meat and stuff. Like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yes, and as for for some, uh, as for the culture, I think that yeah. the greatest, the most important holiday, uh, national holiday, is called Nauriz or Navruz. Uh -huh. uh, well, it's uh, it has uh, the Iranian origin, right. and it's in Kazakhstan. It's celebrated. Uh, on March 22nd, but in some oh. other countries. It's the day I before mean, my like, birthday. Yes. Oh. Yeah. In in some countries That's like uh, Uzbekistan or uh -huh. even in Russia, in uh, like in ta Tatarstan or mm -hmm. some. Uh, well, I think it's it's celebrated on March 21st. Mm -hmm. Well, if we talk about Kazakhstan, so. Yeah. It marks the day of vernal equinox. I mean, mm -hmm. when uh, the day and night become equal. Right, right. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, and oh. so it marks the beginning of a new year. Right, and it's very important. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like New Year for them. Yes, or yes, it, right. Yeah. Or it was, mm -hmm. anyway. Great. Yeah, anyway, it's, uh, this I holiday is, is, is observed uh, yeah. in Kazakhstan and right. it's, it's a public holiday. Yeah. People don't, have, don't go to work uh -huh. for three days. Oh dear. So yeah, <laughs> so nice. they, they celebrate March 21st, 22nd yeah. and 23rd. Mm -hmm. 23rd is <laughs> a great day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, well, uh, people gather together, they mm -hmm. have fun, they have guests. Uh, yeah. They share their meals with each other, uh -huh. so it's very friendly. And of course, it's not only Kazakh people who celebrate that, but yeah. all the 
all the people in all the, all the people in Kazakhstan, yes. And this country, uh, this this holiday unites people, uh, which is good too. Sounds nice. Sounds nice. Uh, what are some of the difficulties now? I could be a little bit serious. <laughs> uh, if I go, or if someone goes, or if someone is living in Kazakhstan, are there any problems? Problems because everywhere I, has problems. I, yes, of course. But I would say the problems can be like here in Russia. Uh-huh. So I can't see much. It's not difference. They're not uh, a huge. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that um, some people have difficulties because the Kazakh language is so widespread, and there's a, an expectation that people should know it, and not all of the citizens know it. Is that is that an issue, or was that an issue? Oh. Uh, well, nowadays, of course, I mean, uh, the importance of knowing Kazakh mm-hmm. is, uh, well, it's higher. Mm-hmm. But, well, anyway, if you know Russian, I mean, if you if you are going to travel to uh, large cities in Kazakhstan, yeah. uh, everybody understands Russian, and yeah. especially, like, in Almaty. Mm, yeah. Well, I can say that in, in Nur Sultan, uh, Many people who come uh, from the southern parts of the country, they don't know Russian, or maybe they know some Russian, and they, of course they prefer to speak Kazakh. Mm-hmm. But yeah. if you travel to Almaty, you should be okay with that, because yeah. even if yeah. you don't know Kazakh, and if you know some Russian, and even yeah. English, well, lots of people uh, speak English there too. Yeah. Maybe not like that good English but anyway it's Somewhere quite understandable there. yeah okay cool and um, uh, lastly what are the best places for tourists and I guess you're gonna mm. talk about Almaty yes uh, <laughs> Almaty and uh, of course the mountains the Alatau mountains right and uh, any specific talk about places in Almaty that you would recommend mm. any sites sites e, well uh, first of all of course is the downtown uh, uh-huh. because it's very beautiful. It has lots of parks, right. and uh, well, also you can visit. I mean, not in Almaty, but there is a skating rink which is mm-hmm. called Mideo, mm-hmm. and it's considered to be the highest skating rink in the world. Mm-hmm. It was built in ni- in the 1960s, I think. Right. Yes, and uh, it's very popular with tourists because, well, if you go there uh, again, the landscape is very beautiful Mm -hmm. and uh, for example even if you uh, go there in the summer you can have some fun just uh, to do some like exercise even Uh, or to do some sports there and uh, also if you go higher up in the mountains there is like a ski resort which is called Shimbulak Uh it's very popular with tourists too and uh, well you can have a great yeah. time there. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. Okay, well, that was the crack about Kazakhstan. So we learned about our experience in Kazakhstan, the different places we yes, visit. I or, hope you enjoyed our talk. Uh huh. And and the connection that in, Vladimir in particular had with has with Kazakhstan, uh, the different cities where we recommend the food, the culture, uh, any problems, but not not too much and great places to visit in Kazakhstan. So that was the crack about Kazakhstan.